Hello and welcome to another Basics of the Bible video. My name is Christopher Scott and if you're new uh, joining me for these videos, there's a series of 75 videos I've been doing going from Genesis through Revelation, uh, giving you introductions to the books and talking about them. So in the description down there at the very beginning is a link to that playlist where you can watch all 75 videos here on YouTube for free. So thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to specifically talk about Psalms, the book of Psalms. I've done a brief introduction to the wisdom books, and so you can find that link up there in the ID cards, and love to have you watch that introduction that kind of outlines it. And so we're going to talk about Psalms today. The book of Psalms, the one word description I've given Psalms is singing. They are Psalms, they are songs, so I've called it singing is that one word description. And if you look at the Old Testament, we'll do a little review. Um, there are 66 books in the entire Bible, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. Out of those 39 in the Old Testament, there's five books of Moses. We call those the Pentateuch or the Torah, Genesis through Deuteronomy, five books of Moses. Then there's 12 historical books. That's Joshua through Esther. And then there are five wisdom books, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. And Psalms is one of those wisdom books. Okay, so the one word description is singing. And I won't, there are various authors that have written Psalms. Most of them are by David. About 73 of them, roughly, are written by David. There's some textual variants in the titles that some people have different numbers, but 73 of the 150 Psalms are written by David. Two are written by Solomon. Two are written by the sons of Korah. Um, I'm sorry, 12 are written by the sons of Korah. 12 are written by Asaph. Um, one was written by Haman. Another one was written by Ethan and one by Moses, Psalm 90. And down there in the notes, uh, the description of this video, I have listings of these and where you can find, you know, the sons of Korah and Asaph, where are those guys talked about in the Bible. I have uh, references for you on those that you're welcome to look up or you can print those notes out for free that I've provided to you. So those are the authors of the book of Psalms, of the different Psalms that are in there. The audience that it was written to is obviously the nation of Israel. To, there are psalms written to the nation of Israel. Uh, the date that they were written, they're written probably between 1446 BC and 931 BC. 1446 BC is when the Exodus took place. That is when Moses led Israel out of Egypt, 1446 BC. And then 931 BC is when King Solomon dies and his son Rehoboam takes the throne in 931. And since Solomon uh, wrote two of the Psalms, that's probably the last couple that were wrote by him. So roughly a span of 500 years in there that these Psalms were written over, uh, starting with Moses, 1446, ending with Solomon in 931. And in the description down there again, I have a list of big events in the Bible with dates, and you can see where those a match up and what goes on there. Probably the most, not probably, the most well-known psalm is Psalm 23. So I'm not going to read that to you, but that's the key psalm that I chose for the book was Psalm 23. The outline I have for the book is based on the books of psalms. So the book of psalm is organized into five different books of psalms. So chapters 1 through 41 is book 1, and if you have a Bible, these titles more than likely are in there telling you how the book is organized. Uh, book 2 is chapters 42 to 72. Book 3 is chapters 73 to 89. Book 4 is chapters 90 to 106. And book 5 is chapters 107 to 150. And in this video, I want to talk to you about the techniques of Hebrew poetry and then the types of Hebrew poetry. So first, let's talk about the techniques of Hebrew poetry. When I gave my introduction to the Wisdom Books video, I mentioned that in English, poetry often is based on rhyming. So if you've ever read Dr. Seuss or anything like that, you know, that's kind of poetry that's based on rhyming. 
some of the more advanced English poetry, like T.S. Eliot, he doesn't really use rhyming at all. It's a little more technical, but most English poetry is based on rhyming. For example, you might say, I think today I'm going to buy hay, right? I think today I'm going to buy hay. Or in Green Eggs, you know, in Dr. Seuss, I will eat them in a boat. I will eat them with a goat. Yeah. I will eat them in a fox. I will eat them with a on a box. You know, those are the rhymings that he uses in Dr. Seuss. But Hebrew poetry is not that way. It's not based on rhyming. It's based on interaction between lines. So the first line will say this, and then the second line says something opposite. The first line says this, and then the second line says the same thing. The first line says this, then the second line um, develops that idea and describes it further. That's one of the types of Hebrew poetry. It's called parallelism. And also a part of Hebrew poetry is that they use um, word order and cadence. So it kind of has the same feel to it as you go through. The words don't necessarily rhyme, but they are parallel together. Now when that Hebrew gets translated into English, we completely lose it. Another thing that we lose with Hebrew poetry is that the words often might play on um, similar word roots and word plays, meaning um, there's different ways you can use the same words. So they might use the same word in two different sections, but in a different way, and they'll sound different, but when you read it, you'll see that word play. And so again, that gets lost when you're reading it in English, but thankfully we have good Bible scholars that know Hebrew that write great technical commentaries that will pull those things out for us when, when they're important. So with that said, I want to talk to you about the techniques of Hebrew poetry. And I'm going to read the techniques and then give you an example. So this video will be a little bit longer than most of my Basics of the Bible videos. But I want to give you real life examples of these techniques and not just tell you theory, if that makes sense. So the first technique of Hebrew poetry, there's really four types of parallelism I'm going to give you. There's more, um, but this is a basic summary. So synonymous parallelism is one type of Hebrew poetry. Synonymous parallelism, and that's where the second line repeats the idea of the first line. So as you open your book of Psalms, you'll see um, that they're organized based on lines here, and they break up the lines based on the Hebrew. And so an example of this is Psalms 3.1, where it says, O Lord, how my adversaries have increased. Line one. Many are rising up against me. Line two. The second line is just repeating what happens in the first. That's synonymous parallelism. parallelism. O oh Lord, how my adversaries have increased. Many of my enemies are rising up against me. They're saying the same thing. That's called synonymous parallelism. A second type of parallelism, a technique of Hebrew poetry, is antithetical parallelism, where the second line has an idea that is opposite of the first. It's the antithesis. Anti, it's different. So a good example of that is Psalm 1-6 says, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. See how they're saying, but the Lord knows the way of the righteous, line one, but the way of the wicked will perish, line two. Completely opposite. That's antithetical parallelism. Then there's synthetic parallelism, which is kind of similar to synonymous, but with a slight twist. Synthetic parallelism in the synthetic parallelism, the second line or the succeeding lines add to or develop the idea of the first. So it will take that semi same idea and add to it, develop it, explain it even more. An example of this is Psalms uh, 1, 1 and 2. Okay, Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. He says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. So that first line, he says, how blessed is the man who does not walk. He doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked. And since he doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, he doesn't sit, he doesn't stand in the path of sinners, nor sit with scoffers. But in his delight of the Lord, and in his law, he meditates. So it takes the idea that 
A righteous man doesn't just stay away from wicked people, he actually delights in the Lord. It further explains, that's called synthetic parallelism. A fourth one is called emblematic parallelism, where the second line elevates the thought of the first, often by using what's called a simile. So an a example of that is Psalm 42.1. Psalm 42.1, emblematic parallelism. An emblematic parallelism, the second line elevates the thought of the first, but it uses often a simile to do that. So 42.1, as the deer pants for water, so my soul pants for you, O God. As the deer pants for water, line one, so my soul pants for you, or God. And the simile compares two things, usually using like or as, kind of like a metaphor, except a metaphor doesn't use like or as, but a simile usually uses like or as. In this case, it uses so. That's the connection. As the deer pants for the water brooks, like my soul pants for you, O oh God. It actually says so, but you can change those, all right? So those are the four techniques of Hebrew poetry, parallelism, synonymous parallelism, antithetical, synthetic, and emblematic. And so those are the techniques of Hebrew poetry, but there's also different types of psalms that you read. Out of 150 psalms, there, is a, there are a bunch of different types. One type are praise psalms. These talk excitedly about God and they thank him, praise psalms. Another type of psalms are lament uh, where you plea to God, the person writing the psalm, pleads to God to intervene in a crisis. Some lament psalms are individual and some are community. Some are just for the person writing it. Some are for the community um, that they are living in. Another type of psalms are messianic. These are psalms that predict or describe the coming Messiah of Israel, the coming Savior, Jesus Christ. A fourth type of psalms are pilgrim psalms, and these refer to uh, the psalms that Jews sung while they were traveling to Jerusalem for national feast days. Um, they're also called psalms of ascent, A-S-C-E-N-T, ascent, like they're going up because Jerusalem is kind of located on a hill, so often you have to go up to get to it. And so they're called psalms of ascent or pilgrim psalms. Those are psalms that they would sing while traveling to Jerusalem. There's also, there are also alphabetical psalms. Several, um, these are acrostics where each verse or each line will start with a successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So for example, if you read a Psalm 119, that is probably the best known one, um, where each, you know, section starts with the letter and each verse within that section starts with the letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Alphabet, you know, you know, chemo, dalet, things like that. Wisdom psalms are another type of psalms. These overlap with psalms of praise, but have a special emphasis on understanding and our understanding of God. And then last type of psalms out of these seven that I'm giving you are what are called imprecatory psalms. They're often psalms of prayer that can be called oracles of judgment against another nation or another ruler, and it's asking for God's justice to prevail and to overthrow those rulers. Okay, and in the description down there, I've given you um, a description of these psalms and then references, so you can look up the different types of psalms as well. So one more thing to share with you before we go. This is going to be the longest basics of the Bible video I've done thus far. I want to share with you the name of Psalms because I think that's important. The title, the book of Psalms in our Bible. Where, Bible, where do we get that name? So the book of Psalms was the hymnal of the Jewish people. It was their literal song book, and that's what they called to it. They referred to it as the book of praises, the book of praises. So in the Hebrew Bible, there's no actual title, but they would refer to it in contemporary writings as the book of praises. In the Greek translation of the Hebrew, the Septuagint, the LXX, it's called uh, the Tolaim. It's called the Book of Psalms, I'm sorry, Psalmos, Psalmoi in the plural, which is the Greek rendering of Mizroar, Mizmor. 
I always struggle with my Hebrew enunciation, mizmor, which means song sung to the accompaniment of a musical instrument. So that's the Greek translation of the Hebrew. Psalmor, psalmos, psalmoi in the plural, psalmos, singular, psalmoi, plural. And that's a translation of the Hebrew word mizmor, which is a song sung to the accompaniment of a musical instrument. In the New Testament, Jesus talks about the book of Psalms as well as Peter, and they both call it the book of Psalms. Okay, so we have a good title. It's the book of praises, the book of singing. So thanks for watching this video. My name is Christopher Scott. I hope it's helpful for you as you read the book of Psalms, give you some understanding of the different elements, and so you can have a better understanding as you read through it. If you found this video helpful, I would love to have you subscribe to my monthly email newsletter. There is a link in the first comment on this video where you can subscribe to that. I promise I only send you one email per month. And in that email, I give you links to my newest articles published that month, as well as these new, um, these new YouTube videos. So thanks for watching and hope to catch you again soon for another video.